Support Name Explain on Patreon for $1 a month to enjoy ad-free videos, exclusive content, your name at the end of each video, as well as the chance to have your idea for a Name Explain video made into reality. Go to patreon.com forward slash name explain or click the link down below. Ancient Greece was not a singular nation or empire in the same way, say, the Roman Empire was, or even how modern Greece the nation is today. In fact, the only time all of modern day Greece was under the rule of one person in antiquity was when Alexander the Great ruled the roost here. Yet we all have a clear idea of what ancient Greece was like, whether that be through reading stories or watching films on the matter. If ancient Greece wasn't one nation, then what was it? The land we now dub Greece was instead ruled over by multiple smaller areas which were called city-states or polis in Greek. These city-states are pretty much exactly what they sound like, small sovereign states which consisted of little more than a city and the surrounding area. Though despite their size, these city-states could be powerful and world-changing. While each city-state ruled over itself, there were some connections between them all, like they all spoke the same language, albeit different dialects of it, and they all followed the same ancient Greek religion. People People were allowed to freely move between city-states too. Cultures did vary greatly between these city-states. Some were democracies which valued the arts and education, while others ruled by kings and focused on combat. There grew to be over 1,000 different city-states in ancient Greece, so we won't be covering all of them. Instead, we'll be focusing on the more well-known of ones. The names of many of these city-states, despite being thousands of years old, have really stood the test of time and have either become some of the most well-known place names in history or is still being used in the nation of Greece to this day. Perhaps most noticeably, we have the ancient city-state of Athens, which today serves as the modern nation's capital. It's also worth noting quickly that many of these city-states had different names in ancient Greek, and we will highlight some of these names when appropriate, but otherwise we'll be focusing on the more popular modern names. There's a reason why Athens is the nation's capital today, and that's because ancient Athens was the largest and most powerful of all these Greek city-states. Like many of the Greek city-states, Athens was built around a hill with a temple on top. Remains of this temple, known as the Acropolis, are still present to this day. Athens is seen as valuing education and wisdom above all things. It is the birthplace of Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle moved to study there. It is also supposedly the birthplace of a democracy, and at its peak, Athenian men were allowed to vote on all important issues. What came out of Athens influenced so much of the modern Western world. Even Washington DC's architecture was inspired by Athens. What of that name, however? This name, of course, comes to us from the mythology of ancient Greece. Athens is, of course, named after the goddess of Athena. She is the goddess of wisdom, so it makes sense why a city so entrenched in learning and wisdom would be named after her. However, there is more to this story. All the Greek gods wanted cities in their honour with temples to them, and when it came to being the god of this city, two wanted that honour the most, Poseidon and Athena. Both offer gifts to the city. Athena's was an olive tree which could grant oxygen and food to the people of the city. Zeus thought this gift was fantastic and bestowed the city to her, and her name became one with the city. Though just as well known as Athens is the Greek city-state of Sparta. This city-state didn't value wisdom as much as Athens, but instead put more emphasis into military might and power. Even defeating Athens in the Peloponnesian War, Sparta was ruled not in a democracy but instead by two kings and the state had a strict social system with full blood Spartans being on top and the herlots who were slaves and serfs on the bottom. Military service was compulsory for all healthy Spartan men and their warriors were some of history's most infamous. Unlike Athens too is how Spartan women were treated. While they were not in the military they were allowed more freedom than say women of Athens and even received an education. Sparta's power eventually declined. However the the modern city of Sparta in Greece was built on the site of this ancient powerhouse. Despite how well known Sparta is, we aren't entirely sure as to where this name came from. One idea on where this name came from is that it might come from the Greek term of Sparta, which is a term for a type of string or cord. It's thought to possibly be named after this string because it might have been used to set the boundaries of this city. While I said we wouldn't focus too much on these cities' ancient names, I have to mention Sparta's, because unlike many others, it's 
its ancient name is completely different. In its day, this city-state was known as Lacedaemon. However, we once again are not too sure where this name comes from. The reason I mention this name, however, is because it had an impact on language up to this very day. This is with the word laconic, used to describe something or someone who is blunt with their words. This derives from the blunt and minimal way in which Spartans spoke and lived. In fact, just the word Spartan unto itself has entered our lexicon, meaning things like simple and self-restrained. You might say someone lives a very Spartan lifestyle, for example. The city-state of Corinth seems to have held the title of being the most wealthiest of all the Greek city-states. This is because this city was very much one that thrived on trade. In fact, the city had not one, but two ports to allow even more trade. This meant at times in its history, this city's population grew beyond that of even Athens. Corinth would even play a role beyond the age of ancient Greece. When the Romans claimed the land of Greece, they built a new city over the site of the ancient one and dubbed it Corinth, even making it their capital of Greece. And in Christian history, the Corinthian letters were written by Paul the Apostle in this land to its people, and they have now gone on to form part of the New Testament. It's a city-state that has a long history, that's for sure, even beyond the times of ancient Greece. Corinth seems to be a simple adaptation of its ancient name of Corinthos. The former part of this name is believed to mean point or peak, perhaps in relation to this city's geography. The latter part of this name is actually unknown to us, though it's thought to possibly come from a lost language of Greece. The city-state of Thebes is one that seems to be most strongly linked with the ancient Greek mythology. Many of the Greek myths took place in this state, with the likes of Heracles and Dionysus spending time here. Most noticeably, Oedipus was once the king of this city-state. Thebes seems to be one of the older city-states too, so in fact, we aren't sure where the name comes from. There is one idea, however. There was another ancient city with this name, all the way over in Egypt. Its remains are now littered throughout the modern city of Luxor. One idea is that this city in Greece was named after the city in Egypt. It's worth highlighting that the city-states of ancient Greece expanded out to way beyond the land that we now see as Greece today. For example, the Greek city-state of Syracuse is on the island of Sicily, which is now a part of Italy. In its heyday, this city-state would have been quite the powerhouse, and while not all too much of it remains, the theatre built by the Greeks remains in all its dramatic glory. One of Syracuse's most recognisable residents has to be the mathematician Archimedes. One idea as to where the name Syracuse comes from is that it might come from the Phoenician term meaning to feel ill. Strange, I know. But apparently, it may have this name due to the city being built near a swamp, which would make many in the ancient world feel unwell. To many in the United States, this name might be more known for being the name of a city in New York State. The city-state of Eritrea is one primarily in the history books, as this city was destroyed in the 5th century BC. This means we don't know too much about it other than it was a coastal town. It seems that its location would have heavily influenced its name. This name means the city of the rowers, as in those who row boats. This name relates to their coastal location and links to the powerful navy this city-state once had. And yeah, there's an African nation with this exact same name. The city-state of Rhodes, of course, resided on the island which shares its name. This island-based city-state grew powerful and once held one of the ancient wonders of the world, the Colossus of Rhodes. Ships would sail into the city underneath its legs. The name is thought to possibly either come from the Greek word of Lodon, meaning rose, as they grew on the island, or possibly from the Phoenician word of Elod, which means snakes. This is because there were many snakes on the island. While there are still snakes in Rhodes, they don't appear to be that common. The city-state of Argos is one of the longest habited cities on the entire planet, still around to this day. The city is believed to be named after one of Zeus's sons, named Argus, and this is also the Greek word for swift or shining bright. This explains why the UK-based shop of Argos have this name too, as they get things to you swiftly. And if you're curious, it doesn't seem to have too much to do with the legendary Jason's ship, nor those who travelled on it, dubbed the Argonauts. This ship is named after the person who constructed it, a different Argus, though having a boat with a name meaning swift is pretty fitting to say the least. 
finally, I want to end with one of the most well-known of the city-states from Greek mythology, that being the long-gone city of Troy. Troy was actually in part of the modern nation of Turkey. The city of Troy was the location of Homer's epic poems of the Iliad and the Odyssey, which involves war, gods, and of course a big wooden horse. As to where the name Troy came from, well, once again, it is named after its supposed legendary founder, that being a man by the name of Tros. We don't seem to know all too much about Tros, but his legacy lives on in the name of one of Greek mythology's most famous locations. Anyway, that's just a small handful of the city-states that were present in ancient Greece that helped shape the modern Western world. From the well-educated Athens to the might of Sparta, to the many others that graced this land. Let me know which ones I missed out on, and if you happen to be watching from Greece itself, let me know what ancient city-state you are commenting from. Name Explained depends on viewers like yourself supporting the channel financially on Patreon, so a huge thank you to everyone who does. Donating just $1 a month helps the channel amazingly and gets you bonuses including ad-free videos, exclusive content, the power to request ideas to be made into actual Name Explained videos, and your name at the end of the video with all these awesome people. Visit patreon.com forward slash Name Explained or click the link down below to find out how you too can support the channel. Thank you. Thanks for reaching the end of the video, why not watch another and subscribe to keep up to date on all things Name Explain. You can find myself on Instagram where I'm Name Explain YT and join the Facebook group Friends of Name Explain to talk with myself and other name nerds. All of that will be linked down below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.